And, yeah, and you know, it was so much fun. It, it, I, I, cause I've always loved that piece. It's one of my all-time, like, top five operatic pieces, with, especially with the beautiful harmony. So, yeah, it was a real thrill to do it, and I really love what they did. Uh, no, I them. am yeah. always enthused when uh, music that is popular in the, in the sense that people like it and listen to it, not just that it's pop genre, but when it's popular music that can be rooted in something serious like classical music. So here mm-hmm. it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is Flower Duet. <laughs>
I just love to let the music fade after all those years in broadcast radio where, you know, you, you walk all over the intro and you do a commercial or something on the outro. I just love to sit and listen to the music and let it fade naturally. And this stuff that, uh, that uh, Don and Ann have done here is just, it, it, it's so impressive. I mean, it is to me, I can see looking back on this in 50 years or 100 years, I can see looking back on it as this is classical rock and roll. Seriously, not just what's been labeled classic rock, which oh, very, we, very, very we have nice discussed and very... banned in the past. But uh, yeah, it yeah. is. Don and Andy, well, we were just, have... we were discussing this during the during the song that this reminds me and 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 uh, correct me guys if if you think I'm wrong. Uh, but there was a group in the 70s called Focus, and they came out with an album oh, called yeah. Moving Waves. And, and I, I think it was might have been, I don't know, 1976 or 1977. And this flower duet really, really reminds me of something that could have been on that record. And, and I, I loved that record. I, I probably went through three copies of it before I finally settled down. I, just, I used to listen to that thing over and over again. Uh, of course, you know, the um, <clears throat> uh, controlled substances of the time helped. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm ago. with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, Don, you told me, I believe this was from your second album? Correct. Both songs were. Both songs. And that album was na- titled? Transcend. Transcend. Yeah. Transcend. Okay. I want to be sure and, and emphasize that to our listeners. And while I'm doing that, uh, please... Uh, a rule we have here on the David Bowers Awards is that uh, self-promotion is highly encouraged. So uh, tell the folks how they can find you online, contact you, learn about your music and what you've got happening. Go ahead, Ann. Oh, well, you know, we're on Facebook kind of like everybody else. Uh, so if anybody wants to look us up as Dream Aria on Facebook, we have a very active, highly active page there, very interactive with all the fans and with our with us as well. Um, and also Reverb Nation uh, is a huge one. It's sort of connected with Facebook. Uh, and mm-hmm. there's, you know, about, I don't know, Don, how many people are on there now? Almost 300,000 fans or something on that one page. So uh, I, think interact. We, I think we have about 230,000 fans. Oh, 230. Okay. I got ahead of myself. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so so it, what's nice about that is the fans can interact with each other as well, fans of the band as well as with us, and they can ask you know where to find our music on either of those platforms. But also Fantastic. we're on iTunes uh, and, and all, uh, Spotify. Yeah, and also YouTube. So, I know you've got tracks on there. Uh, yeah, we don't have a ton of stuff on YouTube, uh, which we I guess I, I could work on that. But uh, definitely <laughs> Reverb Nation and <laughs> and iTunes and Spotify. I think we're we're gaining a little bit more ground on Spotify now. And that's become a really popular place for music lovers. So well, there yeah, you go, listeners. Look for Dream Aria, A R I A. Of course, we're going to move on to the second group, and with this one, we go a little bit uh, a little bit more goth. And the the group is called Within Gothic Towers. This particular track is named Daydreaming. Let's listen. I'm yours, you are mine again. 
again Our souls become complete You love me You move me la 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 Your face, your grace, your grace is sexy. Your smile, your touch, I love you oh so much. I dance, I sing, sweet whispers in your ears. I shout, I scream, and never wake up from a dream. That's Daydreaming. The group is within Gothic Towers. And uh, we're going to have Don come back in here, if you would, please, and uh, talk to us a little bit about what you've done here, because the feeling I'm getting is kind of a, uh, a cross between goth and something really uh, a little bit lighter, a little bit, uh, dare I say, more cheerful than just goth rock. Well, the whole album's not like that, but uh, that particular song is. Uh, it's actually qu- it's quite an interesting story that about this uh, whole Within Gothic Towers, and that is about three months ago, Eric Simpson, a good friend of mine, also creator of this, uh, with myself, uh, came over to my house and said, I got something for you to listen to. And he played me Within Gothic Towers. It's something that we did 30, 35 years ago, and I had forgotten about it totally. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, totally. Wow. And I'm going, wow, I, yeah, I remember this now. And so I put up on Reverb Nation just you know, about two months ago, and here we are today. Wow, that's amazing. I think you, you, I flashed back when you said that. I'm thinking <laughs> if I had, if I played a tape of what I did 35 years ago on the air, I, uh, I certainly wouldn't want to reproduce it and, re- and sell it today. But no, that, that's amazing, and it it really points up how the roots of our lives and what we've done in the past can influence what we do in the future. That's uh, that's quite an amazing story there. A, a great anecdotal story to include there. Now, what what is your direction? And we're going to play another track, of course, uh, from the Within Gothic Towers. But uh, what what is your direction? Where are you going with the music from uh, this group? What I mem- what I remember from thirty thirty five years ago when I thought about this whole project was that I was going to, I was thinking about doing a a very modern uh, musical, something very modern and it's a musical. And I was thinking of all the theatrics that could be applied with it. That was in my mind when I was sat down and wrote it, but uh, (laughs) it is a little bit Gothic. I I agree with you on that. The whole thing. Mm. I, I'm really catching the, uh, the repetition of the uh, operatic or uh, musical theme uh, in, in, in your thoughts. And I'm getting the impression that you really might really seriously want to do a, uh, a stage musical. Mm-hmm. That's what was, that was in my mind 30, 35 years ago, if I remember correctly, uh, doing a whole stage of it. But now that Dream Ari is, is more pressing to me now than within Gothic Towers, I'd rather take Dream Aria to the next, you know, live and the same musical type of thing, back, you know, as opposed sure. to within Gothic Towers. But, yeah, for sure, within Gothic Towers. If we had spent maybe another six months on it, it maybe we would have gotten it further along. Uh-huh. Uh, it was really you, put together fairly quickly. You may never, you, you might never know. You might go back and decide, hey, I've got six months to kill. I, I might just act. 